Welcome to the Novamind Presenter. The Novamind Presenter is a powerful presentation system built into Novamind and available in the Platinum Edition. To give you an idea of what you can do with the presenter, I'll show you a simple presentation that was created from the Welcome Mind Map within Novamind. This presentation is actually included in the Welcome Mind Map, so you can try it out for yourself later. We're actually looking at a presentation created using the Novamind Presenter right now. This is the presentation intro, which is shown at the start of the presentation. The intro is designed to be something interesting for your audience to look at while they wait for the presentation to start. This is a unique feature of Novamind, and it will show a variety of subtle color changes and visual effects to keep things interesting. You can configure the intro to show custom text, for example, your website URL and other things of interest. I'll show you how to set up the intro and what else you can do with it a bit later. When you're ready to start the presentation, the intro will fade out and your first slide will appear. A presentation slide defines which part of your mind map you want to show at a given time, and they're very easy to set up. In this presentation, the first slide after the intro is a close-up view of the mind map title. When I advance to the next slide, you can see that the first level topics become visible. As you can see, the presenter expands and collapses the topics automatically when I switch between the slides, and it also zooms in and out nicely. As we progress further into the presentation, we present more and more details in our slides, because this is the way that we've created the slides for this presentation. Of course, you have complete flexibility as to what is displayed when you create slides for your presentations. When you're presenting, you can still access hyperlinks, attachments, and topic notes. Simply click on the icons just the way you would normally. To go to the next or previous slide, you can use the mouse buttons or arrow keys on your keyboard. You can also move the mouse to show the presentation toolbar at the bottom left of the screen, which has all of the navigation options on it. Let's just take a closer look at the options available in this toolbar. The first button allows us to switch between the different modes. Currently we're in presentation mode. When in presentation mode, the normal topic selection and keyboard navigation are disabled to allow you to easily give your presentation without accidentally selecting topics. But you can switch into edit mode at any point in the presentation. The walkthrough mode mentioned here is useful for ad hoc presentations where you don't want to set up slides for a formal presentation. We'll cover the walkthrough mode in a separate tutorial. When you switch to edit mode or walkthrough mode, you can always switch back to the presentation mode and it will continue from the slide where you left off. For now, we'll stay in presentation mode. The arrow buttons here enable you to go to the previous and next slides. They also have a tooltip which reminds you of the keyboard shortcuts for these actions in case you forget. The button in between the arrow buttons opens up the slide selector. You can also use Ctrl-M to show the slide selector during the presentation. The slide selector shows you all of the presentation slides at a glance. The currently displayed slide will have a glow around it. If there are more slides than will fit in the window, you can scroll to view the rest using the scroll bar on the right. To select a slide to go to, just click on it. Or you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard and press Enter to select the highlighted slide. This allows you to quickly and easily go to a specific slide in your presentation. If you want to exit without selecting a different slide in the slide selector, either click on the background or press escape. Let's just jump to the last slide in the presentation. When you press next on the very last slide of your presentation, Novamind will show a black screen. You can exit the presentation by clicking anywhere or pressing escape, but it's quite useful to keep this screen after a presentation during question time when you don't want your audience to be distracted by the contents on the screen. While the end of presentation screen is visible, you can also easily access the slide selector, the edit mode, or the walkthrough mode, so this is ideal if you want to show a slide or use the walkthrough to address any questions. Now you've seen a little bit of what the presenter enables you to do. Let's look at how easy it is to create a presentation like this. To access the presenter features, it's best to open the presenter tab on the ribbon. From here you can open the slides sidebar, which shows you a list of your presentation slides and enables you to easily create new slides, edit existing slides, or reorder them. You can also access the slides sidebar by clicking on the icon at the bottom left of the screen. 
Clicking on existing slides will show the slide on the mind map just in the way it would be shown in the presentation. To create a new slide, you simply select a topic and press the Create from Selection button. This button is also available on the ribbon and you can also use the context menu on the topic to create a slide. The new slide will be added after the currently selected slide or at the end of the list if you don't have any slides selected. When a slide is created, it will show all the subtopics which were visible at the time. To control which subtopics to expand or collapse, you can either expand and collapse them the way you want them before you create the slide, or you can double click on an existing slide to edit it. When you edit a slide, a red border will appear around the area that will be shown when presenting this slide. You can also see that the main topic of this slide will be highlighted with a red glow. Collapsing and expanding any of the subtopics of the main topic of this slide will automatically update the slide. To finish editing the slide, you can simply deselect the topic, select a topic outside the slide, or click on a different slide. Once created, slides will automatically update when you change your mind map. If you delete a topic that is the main topic of the slide, the corresponding slide will also be deleted. You can safely graft a topic that's featured by a slide, and the slide will still be intact afterwards. In addition to deciding what should be shown on a slide, you can also control how far the application will zoom in to show the slide. When you edit a slide, you'll notice that the red border has three buttons in the top left-hand corner. The first button allows you to show a slide with a little bit more empty space around the topics than normally. This will cause the topics to be smaller and is useful if you want to show a bit more context than usual. The normal setting, which is the recommended setting for most topics, will zoom into the topics but will make sure that the images and adornments will still look good and aren't shown too big. The last setting is the close-up setting, which is the setting that we used for the first slide where you could see the main mind map title fill the whole screen. This option is useful for close-up views of topics, shapes, or images, but you should make sure that you're using high-quality images so that the image will still look good at the larger size. All of this gives you a lot of flexibility. You can set up the slides in any order and with the exact content that you want presented. You can also easily reorder the slides on the slide sidebar, and you can hide slides to experiment with different setups. Any slides that are hidden will have a box with a diagonal line in it drawn across the slide number, and the slide itself will be grayed out. Hidden slides will not play in your presentation and will not be available in the slide selector. You can also hide the intro slide if you don't want the intro to be shown. As with any other slide, you can edit the intro slide by double-clicking on it, but in the case of the intro slide, it opens up this configuration panel. As you can see, there are several options for you to play with. Firstly, the title. This is shown as large title text on the opening slide. If you leave this empty, it will use the title of the first mind map in the document. Otherwise, you can type whatever you want to appear. In this example, we just left it blank to show the mind map title. Next is the subtitle, which is shown in smaller letters below the title, and then scrolling text. This text is scrolled across the screen from time to time while the initial slide is showing. You can enter multiple lines of text in here, and each line will be used at random intervals. You might like to enter phrases relevant to the presentation, or perhaps URLs of websites people can look at while they're waiting for the presentation to begin. There's also a checkbox where you can decide whether the current time should be shown during the intro. When active, the current time will appear at random intervals similar to the scrolling text. This option is useful if you're doing a live presentation. Just make sure, though, that you've set the correct local time on your computer if you're using this option. Next, we see the Twitter search term. We haven't used this in our presentation, but if you enter something in this field, it'll be used as a search on Twitter if your computer is connected to the Internet. You can use any search, just the same as if you were searching directly on Twitter. So this can include simple text or hashtags. This can be particularly interesting when you're at a conference where they've given a hashtag for attendees to tweet with. When something that matches is found, it's shown for a few seconds as a panel on the screen. You might even find your audience having a bit of fun before the presentation tweeting things and seeing them appear on the big screen. If you're happy with Novamind and want to tell people how you made the presentation, you can check the 
Help Spread the Word checkbox, which will tell people on the intro slide and at the end of the presentation that it was created with Novamind. When you're ready to start your presentation, you can use the buttons on the ribbon bar to either start the presentation from the beginning or start it from the currently selected slide. When the presentation starts, Novamind will automatically maximize the window to use your whole screen and the ribbon and status bar will slide out of the way. You can access the ribbon or status bar at any time by moving your mouse to the top or bottom of the screen. If you don't want Novamind to maximize the window, you can hold down the control key while starting the presentation. This will leave the window size as it is while still sliding out the ribbon and status bar. This is especially useful if you're doing a screencast and you don't want to have Novamind cover the full screen. Before we end this tutorial, I'll give you some tips on how you can make the best use of these features and maximize the effect of your presentation. An advanced technique is to use more than one topic to create your slide from. You can use this for multiple things. You can use it to show a group of attached shapes. You can use it to focus only on a few of the subtopics of a topic. You can use it to show a topic and its parent topic. Or you could use it on a radial layout topic to only show one side. When you have a slide that was created from multiple slides and you change your mind map a lot, it can get a little confusing sometimes. So remember that you can always double click a slide and see which topics a slide was created from by looking at the red glow on the topics. If you want to present things that don't directly fit into the main mind map, you can create floating topics and create slides from them. You can also create a second mind map in your document and create slides there. Slides can be created in any mind map of the document and the presenter will switch between the maps as needed. This is especially useful if you just want to show a single image or a quote on the screen. To do this you can create a new mind map and then add the image or text and create a slide for it. You can also remove the fill and outline of the topic and if you only have an image you might want to also remove the topic text. When you create a slide from this topic, you can pick the close-up option to show it as big as possible. To create an even more distinctive look to this slide, you can change the background color of the mind map. You can also do a similar sort of thing with a floating topic on the main mind map if you prefer. If you really want to become a power user of the presenter, you can read the full written documentation which gives you finer detail about the options and some more tips and tricks to get the most out of it. But what we've covered here is ample to get you up and running. So now you have everything you need to go out there and give amazing presentations directly from within Novamind using the Novamind presenter.